Hello everyone and welcome to the course on simulating fluid flows using Python. In the last lecture, we had a look on the governing equations on fluid flow and we saw that a lot of derivative terms were appearing in those equations and we saw that we could use a technique that is called as a finite differencing method that could be used to convert those differential equations to algebraic equations. So today we are going to dive a little bit deeper into that. We are going to understand how we can use the finite differencing method to evaluate the first derivative. And to be specific, we'll talk about three particular schemes, the forward differencing, the backward differencing, and the central differencing. In the second part of this lecture, we'll take the example of a polynomial of whose analytical derivative or whose exact derivative we'll know about and we'll try to compare our finite differencing results with that of the analytical solution. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. So let's start our story with the forward differencing method. So recall that in the last lecture, we wrote the Taylor series expansion of a function f in this particular fashion. So when we talk of finite differencing method, our objective here is to get the derivatives of this function. So for now, we are focusing on the first derivative that is represented as f prime, or sometimes we also call it as f dash. So it's easy to see that if we evaluate f dash, we can rearrange this equation and we can write the first derivative in this particular fashion. So I want you to focus your attention on the terms that are inside the bracket. And if you observe, the first term has a multiple of h, the second term has a multiple of h square, and third term would have a multiple of h cube and so on. So in the context of CFD, this h is the grid spacing or the distance between any two points. So almost always this h is less than 1. So you can imagine that h would be greater than h square and that would be greater than h cube and so on. So if I look at all these terms inside the bracket, it is very likely that the largest term here would be the first term itself because it is multiplied by h. So in order to write all these bracketed terms in a more compact fashion, we usually write it in this particular fashion where we see that all the bracketed terms, they are of the order of h. When I say order, I roughly mean they are about the same size of h. Or in other words, if I change h by let us say 10%, it is very likely that those bracketed terms that entire series that would also change by roughly 10%. So this particular final equation, it's the first order estimate using the forward differencing method, where the green part is the approximated value and the red part is called as the truncation error. So we have gotten rid of all those bracketed terms. So we have truncated the series right over there. And we are saying that the leading term or in the truncation error or the leading term in the truncated series of terms was of the order of h. And we said that because that particular leading term, that the first term, it had a multiple of h. And in the similar fashion, we can go about backward differencing, but this time we would need the Taylor series expansion at the other point, that is x0 minus h. And using the similar rearrangement, we can again write for the first order derivative and again if you observe the leading order term here has a multiple of h and therefore we can squeeze this down further and write the same order of h. So the green part here is the backward differencing estimate of the first order derivative while the red part here is again the truncation error and it is important to see that the truncation error is of the order of h. So using this particular slide, I want to give you a graphical feel of what is going on. So if I take this function f of x, which I said was defined at discrete number of points. So let us say if the middle point over here, that is x naught, and the point that is lying forward in space, 
we can call that as x0 plus h. Then the forward differencing use those two points in order to estimate the derivative using this particular equation. And similarly, when we talk of backward differencing, it takes the point x0 and the point that is lying behind or backward in space in order to estimate the same derivative. And because both of these schemes have the order of h truncation error, we call these schemes as first order accurate. And that number one, it's coming due to the exponent of that h because the truncation error is order of h raised to power one. So that is why we call these schemes as first order accurate. Now we want to look for schemes that are what is called as a higher order accurate schemes. So when I say first order accurate and higher order accurate, we typically means that this first order accurate would be less accurate than these higher order accurate schemes. So given that the forward and backward differencing schemes produce a truncation error of order h, can we somehow devise a numerical scheme to evaluate again the first derivative, but can we have a scheme which would give me an order of error where the h raised to power n, where n would be larger than one. So n could be two, 2.5 and so on. So can we do that? Let's try. So again, we take the two Taylor series expansions that we had written for x naught plus h and x naught minus h. The task here is to get the f dash x naught, but with a higher truncation order. In order to do that, we can very easily subtract the second equation from the first equation. And we can see that the f dash x naught can now be written in this particular fashion. And you can observe that if you subtract some of these terms would be canceling out. So the first term here inside the bracket, it's very easy to see that it would have the leading order where the factor that is being multiplied has h square. So when I want to truncate this particular series, and if I want to write in a much more compact form, we can write the first order derivative in this particular fashion where the truncation error now is order of h square. So this particular formula because it takes x0 plus h and x0 minus h. So if you observe that we had, we had started with x0, we wanted to evaluate this first derivative here and we are taking use of the points surrounding it. That's the reason why this particular scheme is called as the central differencing scheme. And again, if I look at it graphically, we are getting contributions from the two neighboring points in a one dimensional system to get the estimate of the first order derivative. So if I want to summarize what I've learned so far, so we have got the three different differencing scheme to evaluate the first order derivative and the truncation error in these schemes are order of h for the forward and backward and order of h square for the central differencing scheme. So now let us put it to use and take a polynomial which is very easy to differentiate and then we'll compare those analytical results of the first derivative with these results that I have obtained. So I've taken an arbitrary polynomial that is defined as f of x being minus 4x cubed plus 7x squared minus 3x plus 9. And on the right, I've also plotted the polynomial so that you can have a feel of how we are obtaining all those derivatives. So let us say we want to evaluate the first order derivative at x equals to 0. So this x equals to 0 is equivalent to our x naught equals to 0. So we are given the value of x naught and we are said that we can use the h value or the grid spacing of 0 0.25. So now let us first use the forward differencing estimate. So remember, in order to get the forward differencing estimate, we need f of x naught, which is f of zero, which for this particular polynomial is nothing but nine. Then we need f of x naught plus h. So that becomes f of 0 0.25. And in this particular case, that comes out to be 8.625. So putting our numbers together, we can evaluate the first order derivative at x equals to zero. 
and that comes out to be negative 1.25. In the similar way, we can use the backward differencing estimate and now we would use f of x0 minus h. So we would use f of minus 0.25 and that would give me 10.25. And if I plug these numbers in our backward differencing estimate, we would give a first order derivative as minus 5. So from this picture, you can see that uh, we can see that roughly our derivative is expected to be negative. So one of the scheme is saying something, the other scheme is saying something else. Now let us use the central differencing formula. So we have already gotten f of x0 plus h, that is f of 0.25 and f of negative 0.25. So now if I plug these numbers, I get negative 3.25. So because this is a polynomial, we can evaluate what the derivative polynomial is and therefore what the actual derivative is. Thanks to Sir Isaac Newton again. So we can evaluate the first order derivative at simply the first derivative of this polynomial and we get this particular expression. And if I put x0 equals to 0 or x equals to 0, we get that the exact derivative at the origin is negative 3. So if I compare it with the estimates that we have obtained for the various finite differencing method, we get this particular table. So the thing that I want you to observe here is that the absolute error for the forward and backward differencing scheme is roughly the same. And that is what I was meaning by order of those truncation error. So one of the scheme has the absolute error of 1.75 and the another scheme has the truncation error of two. So they are about the same size, but now if you compare it to the central differencing scheme, it has an absolute error of 0.25. The point to note here is that the truncation error from the central differencing is, is much lesser than the forward and backward differencing scheme, almost 10 times lesser. And that is why we say that both the forward and backward differencing scheme, they are about the same inaccurate or accurate, whereas the central differencing scheme, it's usually more accurate or it's one order more accurate than the forward and backward differencing scheme. So I hope that with this example, uh, I tried to convince you that first, how we can write or how we can actually implement these difference formula in order to get the derivatives and some of the schemes, they could be more accurate than the others. And usually in CFD, we want to get more accurate solutions, but again, there would be compromises as you would see later in this series. So this would be all for the lecture today. In the next class, we would actually be diving into the Python world. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to take the same example and we would try to write our first Python script with something called as NumPy, which is a Python uh, module. And we would take the same example. We would try to solve these same equations using Python. Before the start of the next lecture, we would be needing certain softwares in order to write and compile Python codes. So in this particular series, I would be using the Python environment and package manager that is called as Anaconda, which is accessible for both Windows, Linux and Mac users. You can download it from the website. I'll put a link in the description. It's very easy to install it. And we would be using that in order to get our Python codes right. And we would be using the editor called as Spider. So you don't have to download it separately as it comes along with Anaconda. So I'll also be posting uh, these download links in the community post that would be coming probably tomorrow. But I hope that it would be fairly simple. So we would be using these pieces of software in order to write our first Python script. I'm very excited to teach you about all these things. I hope you are as well. So in the next class where we'll put our hands down to write our first Python script, stay safe and take care.